This little guy right here has made wiring on my layout so much easier. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Today I'm going to be talking about this, plus a few other wiring tips and tricks while I build a custom electronics project for my layout. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them, and if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. The thing that's made my wiring a lot easier are these audio jacks with terminal adapters. And they come in a couple different flavors. They have this one on the left and this one on the right. The one all the way on the left is the TS or tip sleeve. Then the one in the middle is the TRS or tip ring sleeve. And then the one on the right is TRRS, which is tip ring ring sleeve. Now, what does this mean? Well, each one of those little black areas on the point is an electrical isolation point. So the one all the way on the left can hold two different sections. So it can do a positive and a negative or a mono signal if it's audio. And then you also have the one in the middle which has three different sections which means it can have uh, stereo sound on it. And then the fourth one has four different isolated sections. So what does this mean? It means that the one on the left can carry two different wires. The one in the middle can do three different wires and the one on the right can do four different wires. If we're looking at signals, the one on the left is not that useful for actual signals, but the one in the middle is great for simple two aspect signals, and the one on the right is great for three aspect signals. Now, how we're going to use these, let's get into that. Taking a look at these really quick, you can see they're very well marked with an L and an R and then a third pin. And the only thing you have to make sure with wiring with these is that they all match. So whatever is wired on the female end of this needs to be exactly the same on the male end of this. Now, if you get beyond the four wires, you may want to consider using some cat cable like this adapter, for example, which is for cat seven. And I use this for my double headed signals to carry the uh, signals to them to carry the power to the LEDs. So these are great for if you have a lot of wires to run. Now for the project I'm going to use these in today, I'm going to be using three TRS adapters, four TS adapters, then you also see another one up there. That's actually a barrel plug DC adapter. I'm also going to be using um, an Arduino Nano, an L298M motor shield, some 20K resistors, a 12 volt power supply, two momentary push buttons, and a few other things. Now, for this project, I'm more concerned with the wiring hacks than the actual thing. So I'm going to be going through this really fast. But if you're interested in it, I do have a schematic in the description below that you can download and build this project yourself. What this project is, is that it's going to control two Kato turnouts on my layout. And it's going to have a signal at each end because these turnouts are pretty close together. That's going to change whenever the turnouts are flipped. And it's also going to have a communication port so where it can send a signal out to another Arduino so that it can change its signal accordingly. Now, this is pretty custom, which is another reason why I don't want to go through sp the specific project. But if you're interested, like I said, the sketch and the schematic are all in the description below. And this is very similar. It's a modification of the multi Kato turnout control sketch that I did a while back. And I will link that at the end of this video. Now, another hack that you are seeing me use here is I am arranging everything on a piece of scrap one by four. And what I'm going to end up doing is hot gluing all of these, but first I'm going to make sure that I mark all of these with a Sharpie. And what I do is I just go in and I write in what they are and where I want them marked. And this will also help later on when I'm redoing some wiring, but having them all in a block of wood and then combining it with the fact that I can plug and unplug all of the wires very easily makes this very easy to take on and take off of the layout and work on it and reprogram it if I need to or rewire it if I need to. That is another great wiring hack that I have is put everything on, like concentrate it on a piece of wood that you can just screw in or something else that you can attach and detach. Combining it with these audio jack adapters for what we're using them for, it just makes life a lot easier in terms of troubleshooting and reprogramming and rewiring. This is actually the second one of these that I've built for my layout. The other one is controlling a different signal on the main line. Another great wiring tip I have is if you're looking to attach your parts 
permanently to a block of wood or anything really in terms of attaching circuit boards or anything like that. I love using hot glue. It's a great insulator. You've seen me use it many times before, but using hot glue to attach parts like this um, is really awesome. I actually got the idea from when I had to open up some of my 3D printers and I noticed that a lot of the connections that the company wanted to keep permanent were actually hot glued in place. And I was like, that's a pretty good idea and I'm gonna use that down the road. So I use hot glue to attach all of my electronics like this and sometimes they pop off, but overall I get really good performance out of this technique. Now this is a custom build for a very specific part of my layout. It controls two Kato turnouts with a two aspect signal at each end of this little section. So I'm not gonna go through this build step by step because it's that custom of a build, which is a modification of the Arduino Kato multiple turnout control project that I did a little while back that was an add-on to MRR1. That video will be linked at the end of this video. But I do have some tips that make this kind of wiring a lot easier. My first one is to use solid wire over stranded wire. Now, why is that? It's because solid wire a it goes into these screw-in terminals a lot easier than stranded wire you don't have all the little strands fraying off everywhere and the other thing is when you need to bend it into a certain place it's gonna bend and it's gonna stay in place now if you do have to use a stranded wire consider tinning the ends that you strip off that's gonna make them go into the terminals a lot easier speaking of wire strippers get yourself a good wire stripper I'll link one in the description below now I do plan on going over this kind of thing with different types of switches later this year, whether it's snap switches or tortoise switch motors, those type of things. I know that everybody obviously doesn't use Kato Unitrack and Kato Unitrack is wired a bit differently than most snap switches. So I want to go over doing this type of pro project with all of those different types. So be on the lookout for that later this year. Once that was done, I set to modifying the original Kato multiple turnout sketch. Um, it really wasn't that hard to modify. I just had to add a few different if then statements for the different signal situations. And then I was good to go. I'll link that sketch in the description below as well. Now it's time to attach the male ends to the wires that are coming up from the signals and the turnouts. Now one thing that I use is these pre-sleeve sets of wires that a lot of times you can find as thermostat wire in your local hardware store. You'll see it as like you'll have the gauge and then how many wires are in it. So you'll see like an 18 slash 2 or 18 slash uh, three, four, five, six, seven. They have a quite a uh, lot of different uh, wiring sets, but they're all pre-sleeved and they come together and it makes wiring so much easier. And then I can just go ahead and start hooking everything in place. I make sure that everything is connected properly, but if I don't have something hooked up right, it's pretty easy just to swap out because of the connectors. So once I have everything hooked up, I'm able to give this thing a test. Now for right now, it's actually going to be sitting on my little work table right here while I test it. The wires were made long enough to where I could run everything out to here. The only thing I don't have connected is the communications because I don't have that wired up on the other side yet. But you can see that our LEDs are powered up. The green one in particular is powered up on our signals right now. And what we're going to go and do is test them out. We're going to hit the buttons that control our turnouts. So we're going to hit this one for the first turnout, which you can see it change. And then the signal promptly switches over to red and then we're going to hit it again uh, let it realign back to normal and you can see that it goes back to green on both sides and you can see the same thing for the other turnout it's going to switch the signals are going to flip and then you hit it again it goes back to main and it goes back to green now I may have made that look very simple and very easy, but in fact, there was a lot of troubleshooting that went on off camera. And all of those little wiring hacks and tips and tricks made the troubleshooting a whole lot easier. I am amazed at how much easier this has made wiring on my layout. I've built two projects with these things and it's absolutely awesome. So if you're looking to try this project out, I have the schematic and the sketch in the description below. You can check out all the other videos, including the original Arduino project at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.
So I do a lot of my work on this channel during my kids nap time and uh, right now they don't want to nap and when they don't nap they love to sing which is great for audio on videos. I really need to get more organized. Ah, there it is. Alright, we can do the video.